The story begins by showing the land of red mist in an unnamed courtyard. We are shown a guy who at first didn't care about this system at all, and clearly drank a lot of cherry juice. His name is Mo Xiao Tian, the former owner of a system called the Study King, a senior high school student and a martial artist. Unfortunately, towards the end of the entrance exams, our hero was seriously injured and broke his leg. Walking along the corridor, he already thought that his studies were over, but suddenly he met something strange. At the other end of the corridor, there was an owl who was clearly waiting for our main character. She flew up to the guy and he immediately realized that this was nothing more than a training system, just like in the novel. When the owl invited him to undergo a year-long training, only one minute passed in the real world, an excellent opportunity to pass all the exams. At that moment, our main character did not even think about the consequences and simply signed a contract for up to 500 years. After all, 500 years is just 500 minutes in reality, that is, eight hours. The guy thought that they would pass unnoticed, but only a hundred years have passed. Our main character has learned all possible skills, but he was clearly going crazy because he couldn't stay here for another 400 years. But the owl was much more terrible because you can leave this world only after death and even suicide is prohibited here. At this moment, Xiao Tian fell into despair because he initially knew that he needed to sign a contract for a shorter period. All these hundred years he had only one assistant with him, and now our hero comes up with the idea that the donkey should finish him off with his blows. Our hero had to use large reserves of grape juice for a month to give them to the donkey. After that, he specially trained a donkey named Lu to aim straight at his face, apparently the guy was completely desperate. Our hero's only task in this world is death, and it doesn't matter by what means he comes to it. Suddenly he uses the most popular technique from Naruto called Millennium of Pain and immediately the donkey performs plastic surgery on his face. Our hero already thought that all his suffering in this world was over, and now he would go home. But when he opened his eyes again, he saw a donkey running away from him and an owl trying to cheer him up. In the next frame, we are shown a small detachment of three people who came to the forbidden lands of the Red Fog. The old man tells the girls about a dangerous place. According to ancient legends, this is the tomb of the ancient demon god, Michin Dajwana. His name is Li Fengzi, and he is one of the great swordsmen who is 999 years old. He tells how this powerful demon god summoned a red mist that kills all living things. At that time, there was the Zhangtian sect, whose mission was to guard this tomb. Later, this sect created a dynasty, and this place began to be called the Forbidden Land of the Emperor. Unfortunately, this dynasty died out more than 900 years ago. Since then, no one else guards this tomb. The girl notices that the old man says every time that the red fog is dissipating all the time. Her name is Yao Buhui, and she is this old man's senior student. She wonders if the day will come when the fog will disappear completely. Li Fengzi tensed at these words and said that this day will definitely come. This lady's name is Lu Shi Er, and she is the old man's junior disciple, and she wonders what will happen when the fog disappears. Will this land be as forbidden? The old man said that this land will no longer be so forbidden, but the ladies are clearly interested in what the grandfather wants to say in his own words. He says that in the imperial family there is a poem written in the language of Guan Tzu. Grandpa makes a seal and his sword begins to spin around him before stabbing into the ground. It turns out that in this way Li Fengzi decided to write this verse on the ground with the help of his sword. The sky is full of red fog and the emperor forbade appearing on this earth, but the ancient demon god wanted to destroy his times so that old death could become new life, so it was written in the verse. The girl thought about the master's words, because this could mean that when the red mist is known, this powerful creature will return again. Grandfather said that she understood everything absolutely correctly, and that he would definitely return. Yao Buhuir is clearly scared because this means that when the demon god returns, the world will plunge into an era of chaos. But the grandfather seems to be a real dead inside, who has seen everything in this life. There have never been quiet times in this world. The younger student comes up to him and says that the master is really so old that he knows the secrets of the royal family. Maybe he saw the last queen. But did the young student really forget that the old man is 999 years old? Of course he saw her. The ferocious donkey begins to accelerate like a Formula One race car, saying that the master has personally fed him magic grape juice for the entire month. It was the incredible taste of the magical grape juice that pushed her to turn into a human. Suddenly, the donkey turns into a beautiful girl in a beautiful red dress with a ponytail on her head, but her tongue still remains like that of a donkey, so as not to disturb the owner, this demon needs to move away. He clearly shouldn't consume grape juice like that, because it will have a bad effect on his health. The girl accelerates like Sonic the Hedgehog, saying that today is the first day of the first month of the new year. On this day, they mourn those times. A lady in a red dress stops at the very cliff with a red raft in her hand. 
It doesn't matter to her how strong the thunderstorm is, but she still won't be able to disturb her master. The lady remembers the songs that her master sings, but does not know whether they can help soothe the pain during the thunderstorm grief. Taking a deep breath, she folds her hands as if starting a prayer, and a pleasant melody sounds. Meanwhile, three people are sitting around a fire outside the red fog. Among them is a 900-year-old old man and his two students. The old man looked at the sky and heard someone singing a song dedicated to the beautiful red moon. The master and his students could not understand where such a beautiful voice appeared in the red fog. The older student said that the sound was coming from the direction of the forbidden land. Probably Billie Eilish was holding her next concert. A younger student asks her friend if she knows what this wonderful melody is. Meanwhile, the girl in red continues her concert in the territory of the red fog. The younger student begins to dance to this melody, and at one point says that she feels that she can comprehend the Tao. Sheer sits in the pose of a monk and makes the corresponding seals, as if entering hermit mode. The girl rises into the air surrounded by a yellow aura, crossing her arms near her stomach in a sage gesture, showing her moment of enlightenment. At this moment, the girl feels like a Vedas Buddha. At 500 years old, she has reached the second stage of the Two-Leaf Warrior. The rest of the team were clearly in shock, and the old man said that exploring the land of bloody mist could really be beneficial. But only this opportunity is very different from the usual ones. Here, his student can reach a new stage of evolution. The singing donkey screamed all night, but did not achieve the appearance of thunderous sorrow, but only cleared the sky and suggested that the master's songs had a dispelling effect. She sang her songs for so long that the sun came out and the red fog dissipated. While the rest of the team was sleeping, Sire notices a girl in the distance after the red mist has cleared and asks who sang those wonderful songs that helped her become fulfilled. The lady in red tried to see the man who was standing on the opposite side of the rock. The younger student waved to her and asked her about that beautiful song she sang last night. Could she send her the Spotify link? The girl screamed at the sight of the human monks because the barrier was destroyed. Her face was clearly frightened. She had to leave before they attacked her. The donkey girl decides to run away and report the disappearance of the barrier to the owner, rolling her eyes out of her sockets from the unexpected meeting with people. The old man and the older student woke up from such loud screams. Why the hell is she making so much noise so early? She shouts to her master that the red mist has disappeared, but this was clearly not good news. Seer stands on her sword like a surfboard and flies after the singing girl to find out this magical track on Spotify that can open up new abilities in her. Her team is trying to warn the younger student not to invade the forbidden territory, but this woman could no longer be stopped. Inside the forbidden land of red mist, the snoring Shautian sleeps, lounging under a fluffy tree, around which lie barrels of grape juice. Suddenly a donkey bursts into the courtyard with terrible cries to warn his master. What upset him most was that he did not die and did not leave this damned world. Xiaotian learns about the disappearance of the red fog. It turns out that he did not know that there was a world outside the fog, and also noticed a girl in the air. Seeing that that girl turned into a donkey, the younger student was surprised, but the older one was more amazed by the fact that a man was still hiding in the red fog. The old man says that this cannot be an ordinary coincidence. Our main character is the same person from the royal family poems. Having met face to face with three unknown people, Xiaotian begins to reason that he, being absorbed by the system, did not even think about the possible existence of other people. The guy begins to come up with a brilliant plan to organize his own death, because now there is an opportunity to find a couple of strong guys. The old man says that if the guy in front of him was truly summoned by the ancient demon god, then he needs to be killed quickly, otherwise he will become a disaster. In the eyes of the old man, Xiaotian looks like a very strong opponent. He even notes that he could be one of the strongest on the continent. The old man begins to think about a plan to kill the guy, realizing that he has two young students with him who have just started living. The donkey starts sticking her tongue out at the trio, waving it back and forth just like Jojo's character plays with a cherry. Buhui was outraged by the donkey's behavior and decided to take her katana out of its sheath in order to properly teach the stupid animal a lesson. Excited, Xiaotian is happy that the girl decides to draw her sword, so this is his chance to get hit and finally die. Suddenly, the old man bends one knee and introduces himself to the young man and the donkey and asks how he can address his Tao friend. Xiaotian says his name and greets the old man, noting that he is just a mere mortal and in no way can call himself a friend of Taoism. Fengzi sees the demon god Maichen as a guy Dawana who committed a huge number of crimes and vile things. Xiaotian begins to think about what to do correctly. Ask them to kill him right away or first treat him to tea and cookies. The guy decides not to waste time and to quickly fulfill his desire, so he invites guests to the house, warning that his inside is a little messy. The old man cautiously agrees to enter Siadian's house, thinking about the proverb that says, 
If you do not enter the tiger's lair, then you cannot get its skin. Xiaotian leads everyone into the house and seats them on high chairs, himself being in a great mood and walking around the room with a smile, while the gloomy faces are waiting for something. The trio notices that the yellow aura that permeates the entire room is much stronger than any holy places they know of. Encouraged, Seer says that with constant training in such a place, their fighting skills will increase to unprecedented heights in a short period of time. Fengzi says that they can't relax in a place like this. Besides, the guy has a donkey demon, which shows that he is not as kind as he seems. The donkey decides to scare the trio worse than the jump scare from It too, and turns into a girl, saying that the old man correctly noticed the skill of her owner. Buhui decides to attack the donkey demon with a sword with a war cry, and begins to unsheath his katana with a blatant expression on his face. The donkey girl says that Buhui is like a little flower who decided to attack the whole forest, so the donkey girl is actually Lu Danji, the four-leaf swordsman. Danji explains that she ran away in the morning, not because she was afraid of the battle, but because of the demon's instinct to fear the human race. Nervous Iyer begins to make excuses, saying that she did not want to challenge Danji to a fight, but only wanted to ask her for a song, so Zyre is trying to save her ass. The old man says that there is no need for quarrels, because they are in the role of guests and should behave like grateful people. Danji says that the guests were grateful for the warm welcome, and left immediately after dinner so that they would not even dare to disturb her host. Before leaving, the donkey decides to take off like a rocket by farting, and leaves a smelly gift of green air for the guests. Xiao Tian set the table with food, and invites all the guests to try some dishes, which turned out to be exclusively vegetarian, like carrots and rice. The guy decides to give the guests homemade wine, which makes them drunk after the first glass so that they stop thinking and finish him off quickly. The wonderful aroma of Tao energy, which is contained in both food and wine, attracts all three of them that their eyes even begin to water and drool. Xiao Tian begins to tell the guests about the methods of preparing such food, which are more like an analogy of local alchemy, pointing to a potion maker, like from Minecraft. After the first spoon, Shire begins to consume one piece of tofu after another, adding a mouthful of food which is very tasty. Xiao Tian decides to celebrate the meeting of the guests and knock glasses as a sign of acquaintance, and, of course, the speedy fulfillment of his cherished goal. Seer says that after drinking wine, she feels a strange sensation inside herself, as if strong energy has filled her body, and she is about to move to the next level of enlightenment. Fengzi notes that the wine works even better than strong cultivation elixirs, healing even the old man's old wounds. Buhui feels the effects of the alcohol on him and begins to stagger from side to side, about to fall to the floor from dizziness. She is caught by Xiao Tian and asks if she is okay, although their position is better suited for more heated issues. Unexpectedly, the girl's eyes filled with hatred, and she suddenly sobered up, standing on her feet, directing her gaze straight into Xiao Tian's soul. The joyful guy is already preparing to accept his death at the hands of a drunken lady with a sword and go back to high school. The old man says that Buhui always loses control of herself during the breakthrough of her enlightenment, but at that moment her strength doubles. Fengzi begins to think through the possible further actions of his student, which could provide an excellent opportunity to test Xiao Tian's strength. The fierce Danji noticed what was happening and decided to attack Buhui, believing that she intended to kill her master. The donkey breaks the girl's sword with her hooves, and it breaks into several small pieces with a crash crumbling on the floor. Buhui pours his vomit all over Xiao Tian, a color that includes all kinds of birds from Angry Birds because I drank too much wine. Xiao Tian stands in confusion as to why the girl vomited blood if she drank just one glass of wine, but immediately became confused. The old man and Zier ran up with Buhui and began to pump her out, while Xiao Tian thought about the comical nature of the situation, because he wanted the guests to kill him, but it turned out quite the opposite. Xiao Tian decides to show incredible heroism and help the girl, using all the doctor skills that he acquired while in the King of Study system. The guy begins to feel the girl's hand, saying that the yin and yang energies are separated, and both of them are deprived of nutrition, which will end very badly for the girl. Fengzi says that Buhui was originally born with a disease of low energy in the body, so this is the diagnosis for people who play Brawl Stars. Xiao Tian decides to use a special Chinese technique of penetrating needles into the muscles to directly impact the energy nodes and further release it. The guy sticks needles into the stupas and toes, also into the knees and stomach, to put pressure on the chakra points and direct the energy in the right direction. Having inserted the last needle into the area above the girl's lip, Xiao Tian connected the thread of her energy into a continuous line, after which the girl immediately opened her eyes. Buhui starts to get up and asks why she suddenly felt so easy, although the needles sticking out of her body may indicate a fun way to get rid of the pain. 
Fengzi says that the guy used the phantom needle technique, which was invented by the demon gods and was often used in the imperial palace. The old man explains to Buhui that it was Xiao Tian who used his medical skills and saved her, for which she begins to thank him, gradually getting up from the floor. Despite the gratitude, the guy's mind is still primarily occupied by the question of how he can get them to kill him. After a while, having recovered, the girl begins to feel sad about the breakage of her sword, blaming only herself for her inability to control her behavior. Buhui says that the blade means a lot to her, because it has come a long way with her, so she wants to bury it with dignity. Buhui turns to Xiao Tian with a request to borrow some more wine in order to carry his blade into the other world, although this alcoholic just liked to vomit. The guy says that the best way to respectfully say goodbye to the girl's blade is to combine alcohol and poetry, as is customary to do in his world. Xiao Tian begins painstaking work on the funeral poem, picking up a pen and ink and a piece of paper. The amazed trio begins to observe Xiao Tian's creative work, marveling at every well-chosen word, every perfectly fitting sentence. Having finished his verse filled with respect that is felt in every line, the guy gives his work to the saddened girl. Feng Jing interrupts the young people's conversation to say that by the time everything is over, it will be too late. So he asks to spend the night with Xiao Tian. The old man thinks warily about Xiao Tian, saying that despite his calm appearance, there is a bloodthirsty demon god in his soul, just like in Diablo 3. The guy tells the guests to discard all formalities and make themselves at home, although he himself was glad that there was hope that they would kill him. That evening, Xiao Tian sits near the grave of Buhui's sword, who has lit funeral candles and buried the blade along with a verse. The guy begins to remember his past years of martial arts training in high school, where he intensively practiced every technique, although he looked more like a ballerina. Xiao Tian remembered the incident due to which he later ended up in the system. Without thinking, he rushed forward to save an unfamiliar girl, after which he injured his leg. The upset guy realizes that she is locked in the system for another 400 years, which is why she sits with a sad face and only hopes for her quick death. As a sign that the sword was able to rest, Xiao Tian decides to salute the Buhui sword once again and begins to cast a special spell that channels the energy of yin and yang. Seer wakes up in the middle of the night with a strong desire to go to the toilet and drink water. Rubbing her eyes, she leaves the room and goes outside. The girl sees the guy using a strong technique that is incomprehensible to her, but she says that she knows that there is a lot of energy in Xiao Tian. Sire decides to tell everything to the elder sister. After listening to her, Buhui says that Xiao Tian has the powers to connect heaven and earth with just one punch, just like One Punch Man. Of Xiao Tian appears in Buhui's head, which contains skills, both strength and a brilliant mind which make him beware of the guy. Meanwhile, the guy continued to use martial arts and concentrate energy in one place, which was easier for him, according to him, than before. Xiao Tian remembers how, as a young man, he worked hard in martial arts training, practicing blow after blow. Pointing his hand upward, the guy pointed the way for energy into the sky, sending all the chakra upward, which became like a beautiful fireworks display. A thunderstorm began in the sky and began to strike everything with lightning, which made the guy seriously scared and made his pants full of brown surprises. Lightning struck a huge oak tree and broke it into pieces, leaving it burning with a large flame like a large torch in the middle of the night. Xiao Tian comes up with another brilliant idea involving lightning, and the light bulb above his head lights up while he's thinking. The guy decides that these lightning bolts will help him get back to high school if they hit him, because they have already destroyed a huge oak tree, and the guy should be killed even easier. Xiao Tian begins to laugh hysterically while looking at the sky, and says that he will definitely die today, just like Grandfather Poole's wish. At this time, Sire begins to perform martial arts movements, which surprises the sister and asks why she is doing this. Sire says that Xiao Tian's martial movements can help Buhui become enlightened and move to a new level of skill, so Sire began to repeat them after him. Buhui thanks his sister, patting her on the head, but says that the power of the reborn is not as simple as they think of it, so there is no point in making movements in vain. The girl adds that it is too early for her sister to learn martial arts techniques because they are available only to very smart and strong people, just like in Tekken. Their conversation was overheard by Danji, who says that Jir is still far from her master, so there is no way she can copy his techniques. The donkey girl decides to repeat the techniques of a master called Tai Chi, but first she must move away so that Xiao Tian does not discover her. Danji begins to copy the guy's movements in an attempt to perform the same martial arts technique with the yin and yang energy in the air. Danji releases a huge yellow energy straight into the stormy sky, making a large hole in the clouds and causing the clouds to spin even more. At this time, in the thunder cloud was the Lord of Thunder and Lightning, Li Gong, who was frightened by a sharp blow of energy into the sky, which released lightning backhand. 
Blue, who looks like a Cyberpunk 2077 character, starts to get angry because he sees that this aura shot was the work of a donkey who was hiding his ability to transform. Legong says that he will definitely take revenge and return this blow, and also add not one, not two more blows, but thousands of times more. At this time, Xiao Tian stands on a high mountain and tries to summon lightning in his direction using a metal sheet, holding it above his head. The guy freaks out and throws the tray away because he's outraged that lightning can't even strike him once. He even intends to face the lightning face to face. Xiao Tian begins to think about how to increase the chances of lightning hitting him. He says that this is a special world, so something unusual needs to be done. He decides to shout some absurd speech into the sky, saying that he will become a lover's wanderer if he is not struck by lightning now. Lightning actually struck right next to the guy, which shocked him, although he himself was waiting for it like some kind of moron. He decides to shout all the stupid things he knows into the air so that lightning will strike him again. He shouts that he will call the stock exchange. Meanwhile, Danji continues to evade Legong's attacks, delicately avoiding the strikes of his lightning and standing in a beautiful stance waiting for the next blow. Legong flies into a fit of rage and decides to use a huge ball of lightning as an attack, which, in his opinion, should definitely kill the donkey girl. Xiao Tian continues to shout nasty things at the lightning so that they will hit him, for which they usually take him to a mental hospital. Xiao Tian's antics and, without the will of the owner, sharply change direction towards the guy as if turning into a thunder snake. Xiao Tian is going to accept the lightning strike with joy and dignity because he believes that this time he will definitely be able to return to his world. The next morning, Fengzi, Xie'er, and Bu Hui meet in the drawing room of Xiao Tian's palace, discussing the loud lightning from the previous night that woke up the old man. The old man begins to explain the possible phenomena that they saw, citing the example of the thunder of the nine heavens, the power of which is enough to destroy the earth and evaporate the waters. Fengzi says that the nine heavens thunder has not happened for thousands of years, so little is known about it, and only from ancient literature. The old man, with a face like he's on drugs, says that since Xiao Tian can summon such strong lightning, he can kill them at any moment. Xiao Tian returns to the trio and asks if they slept well, and if any strange lightning bolts disturbed them. Seer asks the guy if he knows where there was a loud clap of thunder at night, which lasted for several hours. Fengzi completely loses his temper, rolls his eyes in different directions at the fact that Xiao Tian is behaving as if nothing had happened, although he was struck by the strongest lightning. The master thinks that the demon god is already strong, and if he fully restores his strength, then the whole world will definitely be at his demonic feet. Fengzi with the eye of Kaneki Ken from Tokyo Ghoul thinks that Xiao Tian should not be given more time to recuperate. Xiao Tian doesn't feel well and lies in bed while the trio stands next to the bed and monitors the guy's condition. Cher asks what happened to Xiao Tian, to which he replies that he just needs to get a good night's sleep and he will be fine again. Fengzi says that if Xiao Tian is tired, then he needs to rest and he himself knows how to cook well and, if anything, can replace the guy in the kitchen. The girls made grimaces of horror and surprise at the old man's words, as if they were about to have an attack of severe diarrhea. Xier begins to cry from the memory of the last time the master cooked, which ended with her being sick for three days after one bite of his food. The old man hits Sire on the head, leaving her with a huge bump because she doesn't believe in her teacher, and Fengzi leaves to cook. In the kitchen, the old man plans to prepare not just delicious food, but also to dilute it with something, and holds flasks with various additives in his hands. Fengzi decides to combine all the poisons he had in order to definitely kill Zhao Tian, who may not have enough of one bottle. Suddenly, an explosion comes from the kitchen, throwing Seer away from the door and revealing a strange glow from the entrance to the cooking room. The master lies on the kitchen floor covered with food with poison. Apparently, he is the same chef as basketball players from The Hobbits. Buhui bandages the wounded master's head while he inspects the pot and tries to figure out why the food exploded. Fengzi recalls that before the explosion, a yellow silhouette appeared from the pan in which the master immediately recognized the celestial avatar. He says that last night, Xiao Tian deliberately attracted Nine Heavens Thunder to seal its power in this pot. The old man thinks that now this pan has become an incredibly powerful magical weapon that can distract the enemy's vigilance just like a frying pan from PUBG. The culprit of what happened, Xiao Tian, came to the kitchen because he heard an explosion. He asks if the old man is okay. Fengzi says that he was simply not careful with the fire, although in his heart he curses Xiao Tian, branding him a heartless demon who almost killed him. Xiao Tian thinks that the old man could not have blown up the kitchen on purpose, while Fengzi himself is actively discussing something with his students. Xiao Tian's mind, the old man could already be crazy and just like Deidara from Akatsuki, try to blow up everything. 
The guy offers the master his medical assistance, citing the fact that the injuries are unlikely to be serious, although the old man does not want this. Despite the master's reluctance, Buhui and Shi'er take him by the armpits and begin to lead him to Xiaotian, so that he can cure all his wounds. Buhui suddenly becomes ill and falls to her knees, clutching her stomach. Apparently, menstruation has not been heard of in the world of demons. The girl is taken to bed and Xiao Tian decides to examine her again. He begins to feel her stomach in order to find the nodes of her energy. He says that yesterday he accidentally left one needle in the girl's body in the abdomen area when he did her last procedure, for which he deeply apologizes. The guy decides to cook breakfast for everyone and runs away towards the kitchen because Fengzi was injured in an explosion while cooking. After a while, the trio, together with Xiao Tian, sit down at the table to eat. The old man immediately notices that the dish is filled with the pure aura of heaven and earth. Fengzi accepts the guy's gift of food, but still thinks that the young man is hiding something, so he is not going to bend under him. Buhui becomes ill again, and she curls up on the floor saying that something is about to happen, feeling an incomprehensible sensation in her stomach. The girl experienced enlightenment and raised her level of skill, although in her case it looks like receiving female pleasure. Zir is happy for his sister, but the master cannot understand how Buhui managed to become a three-leaf swordsman, jumping over two ranks at once. It dawned on the old man that it was thanks to Xiao Tian's treatment and food that Buhui managed to become enlightened, so Fengzi himself has a desire to do this. He begins to quickly and greedily drink the soup that Xiao Tian has prepared to fill himself with the energy of heaven and earth. Fengzi states that he is feeling very bad and urgently needs to undergo treatment from Mr. Zhetotian. Buhui and Sire listen to the cries of the old man, who screams that he is in pain because he is undergoing Xiao Tian's treatment somewhere in a room in the palace. Fengzi sits completely pricked with needles. There is not a single living spot on him, he looks exactly like an old porcupine. And Xiao Tian says that one treatment session is over. The old man is horrified that Xiao Tian recommends doing the pricking and cauterization procedures for several days. The guy says that Fengzi suffers from a special hidden disease, and only after completing nine courses of his therapy will he be able to get rid of it. The old man starts crying, just like a depressed girl who says she can't stand being shot for eight days. Fengzi remembered the phenomenon of the Nine Heavens Thunder, and told the guy that the lightning would pursue him for nine days, becoming stronger. The old man says that the legends say that on the ninth day, the power of thunder will increase to such a power that it will be stronger than all the eight days before that combined. Fengzi says that he read all the ancient books about the Nine Heavens Thunder, but he didn't really find anything, only the fact that no one survived the fifth night. Xiao Tian grimaces with joy, realizing that every subsequent lightning bolt could be his chance to die. He is still trying to cosplay as Kurt Cobain. The old man notices that the guy really helped him with his needles, because he hasn't felt so healthy for a long time. Fengzi thinks that he will be able to escape with the disciples during the thunderstorm in the first days, because it will not be strong, and Xiao Tian will be busy fighting it. That night, Xiao Tian went up the mountain again with the magic pot and told the sky that he was a delicate flower that needed to be killed immediately. At this time, the heavenly smurf is exercising and is indignant that he will never be able to get a female donkey for which his elders hit him on the head. Lei Gong notices Xiao Tian and begins to get angry because he remembers how he diverted the strongest lightning from the donkey. Now he intends to deal with him. Lagan says that he will charge everyone with the killing power of lightning, and it doesn't matter to him whether they are people or donkeys. He is furious. Already in the morning, Xiao Tian is still standing on the peak of the mountain shouting into the sky, because throughout the night the blue dwarf's attacks could not cause any harm to the guy. Lagan gets angry and starts swearing, saying that tomorrow he will increase the charge of his lightning four times, and then all the people and donkeys will regret their words. Lagan did not show anything impressive. Apparently he is only good at talking, but does not know how to answer for words. On the fourth day, Xiao Dian was still waiting for at least some changes in the strength of the attacks from the sky, but he stood there all night, receiving weak lightning strikes. On the fifth night, Lei Gong decides to use two whole fingers from which he releases lightning, but for Xiao Tian, such a charge did not become lethal. On the sixth day, Xiao Tian began to become disillusioned with the Thunder Master who couldn't kill the guy every night. On the seventh night, the Blue Lord of Lightning decides to use the technique of many hands, which also turns out to be useless. Zeus will definitely punish him like an adult. The eighth day was not distinguished by anything except that Xiao Tian was completely disillusioned with the celestial entity that was desperately trying to kill him. The old man feels sick from the realization that the demon Xiao Tian lasted not only the first days of thunder, but also all eight days in a row. Seer looks out the window and watches the thunder on the ninth night, saying that it is much stronger than a few days ago. Fengji retains his last hope with the thoughts that Xiao Tian should not survive the ninth night, 
Because the power of the lightning has reached its peak, making a face like a character from Jojo, Xiao Tian said that he had not felt anything during the Eight Days of Thunder, calling Lei Gong a skinny dog. Lei Gong decides to use the power of all the energy batteries and teach Xiao Tian a lesson, saying that this attack will definitely kill this brat. Millions of kilowatts of electrical energy pierce the guy's body, reflecting like lightning inside the pan and increasing the power of the attack. Xiao Tian finally felt something and noted that the pulse had stopped and the feeling after being struck by lightning was simply excellent. The evil blue face decides to finish off the guy because he is infuriated that Xiao Tian is resting from his attacks and not suffering as he intended. In the morning, the guy walked as if nothing had happened and said under his breath that one should not hope for disasters and all things like that. Last night, a celestial disaster gave birth to thunderstorm tribulation, an energy in the form of lightning that seeks a successor in the faces of deceased people and objects. A similar lightning found hidden power in the face of the buried Buhui sword, which was imbued with a poem written by Xiao Tian. Buhui sword was destroyed and restored several times, so it was reborn into a new weapon called the Great Sword, which has many chips. Xiao Tian, who found it, thinks about the question of where this sword could have come from, but first decides to give it to Bu Hui, the immediate owner. The trio catches the guy before he finds them and asks him how he's feeling after his last night fighting lightning. The guy says that everything is fine with him and there is no need to worry about him, except that he has become numb in his soul and has become a real anime lover. Xiao Dian reports about the strangely resurrected sword Bu Hui, which he found on the way to the house under the mountain. The sword was all cracked and creased. The old man doubted the guy's honesty because the broken sword was beyond repair and asked him what happened when Xiao Tian found the sword. The guy says that he saw this sword sticking out of the wall and immediately realized that it was the same sword that Bu Hui had recently buried near the house. Bu Hui decides to try out the new sword to understand the fundamental difference compared to the old one. She sees that the sword is disassembled and assembled like Lego. The girl says that the sword is unique and perhaps has its own soul and can tell her several new techniques. Xiao Tian gave the sword a name, namely Li He, for this, and for the fact that he found her sword in the first place, Bu Hui bows to the guy, saying words of gratitude and respect. The old man suspects Xiao Tian that by getting closer to Bu Hui through gifts and care, the demon god will try to return to the real world. To thank the guy, the girl decides to show him a beautiful view of her watermelons, momentarily removing all the extra rags from herself. Bu Hui picks out new clothes for herself and discusses with her sister that the sword's aura is still difficult to control, but once she learns, it will become much stronger. At this time, Xiao Tian evaluates the strength of the sword, and he is struck by the idea that if the sword gets out of control, it will become ferocious and very dangerous just for killing him. Sad Danji is jealous of the guy for Bu Hui because she saw how Xiao Tian looked at the girl when she was left without a covering cloth. Danji decides to return the owner's attention no matter what, so he begins active surveillance of him and his two sisters. Xiao Tian offers to train the girl in sparring so she can learn how to use the new sword, although he just wants to look at her cherries again. As tempting as the offer is, Bu Hui doubts that she should train with such a sword because her skills are not as high as the sword's energy level. To discourage Bu Hui's doubts, the guy decides to show that he also has a weapon, so he brings that same pan and hangs it on his belt. The old man comes out of the room behind the girls and says that Bu Hui should accept his challenge because this will test the skill level of the girl herself and the strength of the demon god. Bu Hui decides to accept the challenge and disintegrates his sword into many small fragments, which move at high speed towards Xiao Tian. Xiao Dian places the pan in front of him as a shield, hoping that it will soon break and he can die in a duel to get to his world. The fight takes place using the guy's strange technique, which allows him to reflect the girl's blows without hitting her in return but to direct the blows through her into the wall. At one point, Xiao Tian relaxes his defense, in the hope that the Bu Hui blade is already angry and ready to kill the guy, and he will accept this idea with dignity. Unexpectedly, Bu Hui's attack did not damage Xiao Tian because the shield on his stomach completely absorbed the damage, almost Captain America's shield. Bu Hui quickly begins to apologize to the guy for using such a strong attack that it could harm him. The guy stands with a sad expression on his face, because in fact, this guy should feel regret that he once again could not die. Bu Hui says that Xiao Tian helped her recover from her illness, achieve enlightenment and restored her sword, but she was ungrateful towards his gifts. The old man interrupts the girl with the words that she should not say such things, because by doing so, she humiliates her opponent. The girl decides to put her sword together on the advice of the master and realizes that controlling it has become much easier than on the first day. As the three discuss raising the girl's level, Xiao Tian once again becomes disappointed in her own, briefly saying that life is crap. 
Fengzi says that even if the three of them attack the guy, they will not be able to defeat him, but he finds it strange that Xiao Tian continues to help them. A saddened Mo Xiao Tian decides to leave the match and take a walk, telling the others to make themselves at home while he is away. Finally, the guy asks the trio to look after his little donkey, who does not eat grass and feed but loves human food. The old man understands that if a donkey eats human food, it means it is a demon animal, and decides to take advantage of this to infiltrate the guy's trust. Sir begins to drown in his own tears from the realization that the master will return to the kitchen and cook. It's better to just eat a pan of dog waste. Xiaodian becomes completely depressed and begins to think that he should have immediately asked the three guests to kill him. The guy takes it out on the owl, who called him to the king of study system with the words that even in the world of immortals he will kill her. In a fit of rage, Xiaotian tells the bird not to flap its wings because some master will not jump out of them and kill him. The guy comes to the realization that he is in the cultivation world, and there should be a lot of masters here who will help him solve the problem. Xiaotian wants to quickly go in search of people who, at the first opportunity, will take out knives and decide to make steaks out of the guy. Meanwhile, Danji eats everything the old man has prepared, which amazes Jair, who cannot even stand the smell of food prepared by the master. The old man says that his culinary skills need constant improvement, but he is glad that at least someone can eat his dishes. Shir compliments Danji and asks what song she sang that day, because Zaire was attracted not just by the sound, but also by the rhythm. Danji decides to perform one of the songs he overheard from its owner, still better than listening to Cardi B's tracks. Sire, influenced by Danji's chanting, begins the process of enlightenment and advances to the level of the three-leaf swordsman, although she has only recently advanced to the second level. After the enlightenment process, Sire asks Danji about what kind of person Xiao Tian is. She is interested because he is stronger than everyone they have met. Danji says that she has no right to talk about the owner's past life, although even if she did, they still would not understand anything. Intrigued, Sire begins to listen carefully to Danji, and the old man decides to connect his ear in order to find out all the details of the demon's past life. Danji says that the master was mysterious in the past, but still told some things when he was intoxicated with super wine. Danji says that the owner has the opportunity to find out what is happening in the sky with the help of a magical device. This is probably the justification for people playing Dota 2. According to Danji, the master only needs to get into a huge flying beast to reach a territory thousands of miles away in a few hours. Finally, Danji says that the owner's ancestors were able to level the ground over a thousand miles using just one finger. All the facts plunge the trio into shock, and they freeze with a face of fear from the powers and capabilities of the owner, even before he found himself in their world. The old man doesn't understand how someone can fly thousands of miles with just one yawn, and also blow up hundreds of miles with just one finger. Seer says that Xiao Tian is even stronger than they expected, and he also has unknown magical weapons that can do unknown things. Fengzi decides to reassure his students with the information that there are many more similar masters in the world, so there is no need to be afraid of Xiao Tian's power. It's easy to tell the old one, who will die soon anyway. At the moment of the old man's speech, Xiao Tian returns to the temple and hears all the words of Fengzi, which confirm his thoughts in the dialogue with the owl. The guy confirmed his thought and decided that if he finds such masters, they will definitely help him in the problem of his own death. The old man is afraid that the guy misunderstood his words and will decide that it was a provocation, so he stands with his mouth open. Xiao Tian flies up to the old man and asks him to introduce him to the very masters he was talking about, taking the guy with him on the road. The old man thinks that Xiao Tian just wants to leave the forbidden territory and start killing people, under the pretext of meeting the masters. The guy justifies everything by saying that he has become bored within four walls and wants to unwind, and at the same time see the world and different masters. Seer says that he will be happy to show many new places because they have a lot of experience in traveling as a master around the world, just bare grills. The girl continues to praise the master, saying that he has seen everything there is in the world because he has already lived for a large number of years. At this time, the old man sits in the corner and thinks that if the guy goes out into the world, he will undoubtedly gain even greater powers and will definitely kill them. Buhue and Seer try to inspire the master and lift him by the armpits with the words that the most important thing for a person is happiness, so you shouldn't think only about the bad. Xiao Tian begins to convincingly ask the master for the favor of showing him the outside world, because he himself will definitely not be able to navigate, just like a Valorant player. The master is thinking about sending the guy to certain people who may be able to resist the power of Xiao Tian, and if they lose, then the old man himself will finish off the demon. Fengzi falls to the floor, holding his back, and says that the trip needs to be postponed until tomorrow because he has not yet had time to recover from cooking. 
The guy immediately understands that the old man is faking, but still agrees with the idea of waiting out the old man's pain, saying that he also needs to prepare for the journey. That same evening, a guy sits on the roof of one of the houses and argues that the old man is a bad actor and Xiao Tian, using basic knowledge of psychology, revealed him. Xiao Tian notices Fengzi, who is sneaking somewhere late at night trying to remain unnoticed. The old man might make a good hitman. The guy decides to follow the master to make sure that the old man lied to Xiao Tian during the day, and if he was telling the truth, then he needs someone in the form of a doctor. Fengzi runs towards the outskirts of the Forbidden Zone, the land of Red Fog, into the Black Stone Forest in order to carry out his plans. The old man sits in the position of the highest accumulation of aura in order to create some kind of thing, because he needs it on his journey with Xiao Tian. Fengzi begins his ritual by saying that he needs to use the Imperial Blood to do this, and he decides to take on his true form. The old man turns out to be not a man at all, but a woman with the same name, who is the heir to the Heavenly Imperial Dynasty, as well as an eight-leaf swordmaster. 200 years ago, Fengzi was attacked by clan traitors, and he was forced to change his appearance using the hidden pulse technique and save his life. Fengzi thinks about all the past days, including cooking and needle therapy, but decides to return to the present and think of a plan for the future. During the attack on the girl, the secrets of the Heavenly Imperial family were lost in the forbidden area during the battle, so she came to retrieve them. Fengzi performs a magical ritual, reciting the ancient lines of summoning the secrets of the Imperial family. She looks like Doctor Strange. After hundreds of years of separation, Fengzi regains the main relic of the clan the jade eye with a double pupil, which looks like a large round amulet. The girl has not yet fully recovered her strength, so having acquired the relic, she will have to fill it with her blood until the amulet awakens. At the moment when Fengzi took the amulet, suddenly a black spinning lump attacks the girl from behind, pushing her. It turned out to be a huge beast with purple-gray fur, red glowing eyes, and an evil grin who wants to eat the girl. At this time, Xiao Tian is looking for Fengzi in the territory of the Blackstone Forest, but so far he only smells a strong stench, just like from Roblox fans. The guy finds the master, although he doesn't recognize him because he is in his real form, and also sees a huge beast that he doesn't have in the world. Fengzi battles a demon wolf that was supposed to belong to the Imperial family, but was subjugated by traitors and sent to ambush her. The girl thinks that it will not be easy for her, because the ferocious wolf is a strong opponent, and Fengzi herself has not yet fully recovered, but she continues to fight. Fetzenzi directs thousands of swords of yellow energy at the huge wolf, saying that she will definitely return the family heirloom by defeating the beast. Fengzi's many attacks work so he admits defeat and collapses, exhausted like a turd in a toilet. The girl suddenly begins to vomit scarlet blood because she did not calculate the strength of her attacks and overdid it, although she has not yet recovered. At this time, the bloodthirsty beast opens its terrible eye, sensing that the girl has begun to weaken and now he can resume attacks. Fengzi says that she exerted herself too much, so the injuries that Xiao Tian treated actually reappeared, and the wolf also became stronger. The creature comes close to the girl, and prepares to tear her apart when Fengzi already believes that she is destined to die in this battle against the wolf. Xiao Tian throws a stone at the wolf and stands up for Fengzi, saying that he can only attack weak girls but cannot attack normal men. The monster does not pay attention to the guy's words and returns his gaze towards the girl, who thinks that the wolf was trained not to harm the royals, but was brainwashed. Xiao Tian decides to use public speaking and acting techniques by shouting to attract the beast's attention to himself. The guy's technique works and the wolf starts chasing him, and the guy runs away with the wolf away from the girl just like at Rodeo. Happy Xiao Tian thinks that he saved the girl from the beast because the wolf is now only chasing him so the girl can run away. The creature is breathing down the guy's neck, but this doesn't scare him at all because for him it turns out to be a very good opportunity to die. The guy decides to run even further before giving himself up to the wolf to take the wolf to a farther place from the girl. The owl turns into a small, shining girl who watches the guy escape from the top of the cliff, noting that Xiao Tian deliberately slows down so that the wolf does not fall behind. The wolf drove Xiao Tian into a dead end and began to growl loudly at him, and the guy is about to accept his death. The Suicide Squad has achieved its goal. Xiao Tian is already imagining how the monster will kill him, and he will find himself back at home, using the internet, reading comics, and finally passing the entrance exams. He shouted loudly that he was coming home, so loudly that a red sound wave came out of his mouth and headed towards the wolf. Owl says the vocal art of resonating Xiao Tianya has enormous power. Its effect is enhanced by constant training. She says that the wolf should have turned into ashes. Xiao Tian is shocked that the wolf has disappeared, that he opened his mouth like Ishao speed. He thinks that the wolf has returned back to the girl. 
The guy returns to the place where he first saw the girl and the wolf and begins to poke his finger in the lady's face to wake her up and find out her condition. The girl wakes up with practically no clothes, wrapped in bandages around her arms and chest, looking just like an Egyptian mummy. The scoundrel Xiao Tian appears in front of the girl and asks if she is okay, which makes the girl scared and begins to hide her dignity. Xiao Tian says that he just saved her from a ferocious wolf, but the girl was seriously injured, so he must use his medical skills to save her. The guy begins the process of multiple acupuncture, noticing that her injuries are very similar to the old man's injuries, apparently all immortals have this. The girl stands up and thanks the guy, to which he replies that he is doing this of his own free will, and advises her not to tempt fate anytime soon. Fengzi agrees with Yao Dian's advice, but decides to take a moment and ask why the guy helped her. They are not even strangers. The guy replies that he doesn't need a reason to save people, and asks why the girl came to such a wilderness. He apparently expects another form of gratitude from the girl. Fengzi is shocked that the demon who recently caused a bloody storm on the continent suddenly decided to help people, so he looks at him with wide open eyes. The guy finds some kind of jewelry behind him and asks himself who could have lost it in the Blackstone Forest. Xiao Tian asks the girl if this is her thing, while she thinks that he should not have survived after touching the Imperial artifact. Fengzi is horrified that her family artifact has fallen into the hands of a demon god, and she thinks that the chance to revive her clan has already disappeared. Xiao Tian simply gives the amulet to Fengzi, saying that lost things in the Blackstone Forest are difficult to find, so she needs to be careful. The girl does not understand why Xiao Tian gave her the amulet, because it is a valuable relic that cannot simply be returned. Fengzi thinks that Xiao Tian abused her while she was sleeping and stared at her melons, so she decides to run away from him, saying that she will take revenge. Xiao Tian heard that the girl wants to kill him, and he thinks that she somehow found out about his desire to die, so he decides to repay him in this way. The guy, crying, says goodbye to the girl, saying that he is waiting for her to return as soon as possible because he is ready to accept gratitude in the form of death. Fengzi meditated in her real form all night to recover from her injuries, but it did not bring much results. This transgender, in the form of an old man, returns to Xiao Tian's house. Because the nightly meditation did not help, he still walks with a limp, but continues to pretend to be an old man. Buhui, Sir, and Xiao Tian appear behind Strick. The sisters are angry with the master because Xiao Tian told them about the old man's night escape beyond the borders of the bloody land. Xiao Tian begins to defend the old man, saying that he must have had important things to do, to which the old man says that he was going out to stretch his old muscles. The guy tells the old man that the nine-day acupuncture course has just ended, and Fengzi immediately went to exercise, which is unacceptable. Upon touching, Xiao Tian feels that the old man has a high pulse and shortness of breath, which suggests that he was either running from someone or fighting. The guy thinks that yesterday's girl, whom he saved from the wolf, is there with whom the old man could fight. Xiao Tian is definitely an idiot if he can't guess. Despite a large number of questions, Xiao Tian decides to change the direction of his thoughts, because he needs to find someone strong in the world of immortals. After a while, Fengzi was left alone to consider the benefits of a night outing, as a result of which he obtained a jade amulet and washed it with royal blood. Fengzi decides to put the treasure on quickly while no one is around to test its true power, so he puts it on his forehead. The old man says that the hidden pulse technique will soon dissipate, and his personality will fall asleep. But he managed to find a jade amulet in the Forbidden Land. He says that all he has to do is deal with Zhao Tian, and then follow the strategy. Drive away the wolves and devour the tigers, and then he will be able to recreate the heavenly dynasty. While Zyre and Buhui are packing for their trip to the open world, Fengzi comes up with a plan in which he will test the strength of both his students and Xiao Tian. Using the powers of the amulet, Fengzi uses the Jade Eye technique which doubles the pupil, a good ability to look at female charms. Shire loads the old man's things into the cart, while he assesses her strength with the help of the Jade Eye, according to which Sire's progress is quite fast, but because of this, unstable. Buhui collects the dishes, while Fengzi looks at it through the magic eye and sees that Buhui's energy state is stable, so there is nothing to worry about. Looking at Xiao Tian, the old man does not see the scale of his strength, but he sees that his entire body will emit light of unknown origin, which frightens the old man. The light becomes so bright that the old man begins to scream in pain as his eyes begin to burn as Xiao Tian approaches. Everyone runs up to the old man hearing his screams, but he tries to hide everything, so he says that he just got sand in his eyes, although he sits as if several bananas had been shoved into his hole. The old man decides to reuse the power of the Jade Eye to make sure that Xiao Tian wants to create complete chaos in the world and the death of everyone. 
He looks through the contents of Xiao Dian's bag, where he discovers books, tassels, bottles, and beads that emit the same strange glow. Fengzi thinks that these things can turn into magical weapons if they are taken outside the Forbidden Land, so he wants to ask Xiao Tian to leave them. The old man offers the guy a special ring that will help him store all his luggage more compactly, to which Xiao Tian replies that he is mortal and will not be able to use it. Fengzi explains that this ring can be used by anyone. Just put it on and think about the items to collect. The guy pulls all the things into the ring, saying that now they can travel lightly. The ring fits as much as the mouths of actresses in films with Johnny Sins. When all the things were collected, the team decided to hit the road, Xiao Tian saddled the donkey, and the old man's disciples stood on their swords and flew. Everyone left the territory of the Forbidden Land where Xiao Tian lived. When an owl flew over her, she saw some kind of purple energy coming out of the ground. A magical creature has burst out of the ground, rejoicing and shouting that it is his turn to crush heaven and earth to become the head of the world. Unexpectedly for him, a lightning attack struck from the sky, striking the purple demon, and he immediately fell silent and evaporated. The heavenly lightning manager says that he will not allow this to happen right under his nose on his territory, and that the purple spirit believed in himself too much. Behind Ligon, who hits him and says that, as usual, he ruined everything and forgot what she told him. The girl says that if Ligon disobeys her order again, she will skin him to teach him a lesson. Legong agrees in fear, but in response asks about the origin of Mo Xiao Tian and why such an important person as the Owl Girl should obey him. The evil girl looks at Ligon with a murderous look, just like an arrogant bitch, and asks if he really wants to know about the origin of her master. Legong replies that he somehow offended Xiao Tian during his anger, so he wants to know his identity to see how insignificant he is compared to him. The owl says that Ligon can atone for his mistake if he makes sure that this garbage does not come out of the ground while the owner is not at home. The owl begins to circle around Xiao Tian's mansion, using some special technique of transferring housing, sealing it in its body. A few days later, the four are still traveling, with the trio discussing why Xiao Tian uses a donkey for transportation, just like the Witcher, instead of flying on a sword like them. The master asks his students what land they are on now, to which they ask a counter question about what this has to do with Xiao Tian. The old man begins to talk about the world order of the universe, saying that there are several more stages of development, in addition to leaf swords, and they are on the ground in honor of the leaves. Fengzi says that every step Xiao Tian takes is not just movement, but it is tempering his Taoist heart and strengthening his cultivation skills. In fact, Xiao Tian does not even suspect that he can wield a sword, but the three sincerely believe that he has comprehended the wisdom of one leaf and the first step on a thousand thousand road. While the old man is thinking that he is leading Xiao Tian to the territory of his enemy so that he can kill him, the guy himself calls Fengzi to the ground to ask him something. The guy says he's nervous because this is his first time doing this, so he wanted to know what the master's first stop was, other than stopping to take a shit. Fengzi describes the city of Sanju, which belongs to the Zhuan dynasty, in which there must surely be strong four-leaf masters, and the head of state owns seven leaves. Xiao Tian thinks that Master Fengzi is only at the fourth level of leaf swordsmanship, and the city leader is at the seventh, so he should definitely kill Xiao Tian. Inspired, Xiao Tian says that they need to hurry to Sanju to meet with strong sword masters, although he himself plans to kill himself on their blade. A day later, they stood at the threshold of a city that looked more like a village than the haven of many strong masters that the guy hopes for. The heroes walk through the city of Sanju, and Xiao Tian talks to himself in disappointment, saying that he expected more from a city in the cultivated world of immortals. The old man says that there are a lot of different places in the world, and he hasn't been to some of them for several hundred years, so they could have changed, although the old man is clearly just lying. Sad Xiao Tian thinks that he doesn't want to doubt the old man's words, but it's unlikely that there will be an opponent strong enough to kill him in a place like this. Fengzi reassures the guy with the words that, despite the dull appearance of the city, his lord as Jia Renyi is truly a supreme master who should suit them. Xiao Dian listens to the old man's words and recognizes some meaning in them, so he gathers his thoughts and goes to meet with the leader of the city with enthusiasm. Fengzi recalls the history of this city, according to which it was an important point for the heavenly dynasty, but Jia Renyi turned out to be a traitor. He's a dog's ass. The old man thinks to himself that thanks to the power of Xiaotian, he will be able to avenge his clan and also find out what the guy himself is capable of. Fengzi brings himself to his senses with thoughts of the revival of the heavenly clan through the collision of Xiaotian and Renyi, which should become a signal. Saishir's stomach begins to growl loudly, and she complains that they haven't eaten anything all day, hinting that it's time for them to eat. The old man says that a short stop will help them get to know the city better, so he leads the trio to a trusted hundred-year-old shop. 
The sisters finished their meal with dozens of plates of food, saying that they were full, but the food here was still far from the masterfully prepared dishes of Xiao Tian. The waiter comes up to the table and asks if the guests liked the food, and also asks when they will pay for what they ordered. Buhui volunteers to pay the bill for everyone, as a sign of gratitude to Xiao Tian for all his good deeds, to which, of course, Jigolo Xiao Tian agrees. The waiter says the amount for which those present ate, which is equal to 2,000 spiritual stones, which is a lot by the standards of the universe. Sisters Buhui and Xie'er rebelled and started shouting at the waiter who, according to them, overcharged such tasteless food. With the help of simple gestures, the waiter calls the city patrol, whose members look like Power Ranger, they intend to find out what's wrong. The waiter asks the city patrol leader, Gu, to deal with customers who have eaten and refused to pay the bill. Fengzi wants to start a conflict between the city administration and Xiao Tian, so he tries to shift all the blame onto him. For this, he uses the Jade Eye. Xiao Tian decides that if he pisses off the city patrol, they can either stab him with a knife or beat him to death, which in both cases will work to his advantage, so he starts calling him names. Gao approaches Xiao Tian and pulls his dress, telling him that if he refuses to pay for the food, he will have to leave the restaurant and go with the patrol. Xiao Tian's ring, which emit a strong light, just like the infinity stones in Thanos' glove. The city patrol members cover their eyes with their hands and say that the small beads have strong internal energy, so they are considered magical weapons. Xiao Tian calmly takes these beads and says that he did not even think that these things would glow when he created them, shocking the patrol captain with these words. Gao falls to his knees in front of Xiao Tian, thinking that the guy is the greatest master for creating such a magical weapon. Xiao Tian remembers his goal, so he starts yelling at Gu that he has no money and that he doesn't believe in the strength of the city patrol. The frightened city patrol chief says that he will not take Xiao Tian into custody, which shocks him, so the guy looks at him with a blank look. Xiao Tian realizes that his plan did not work, but for some reason everything happened the other way around, and Gu began to fear him instead of taking him to prison. Gao asks Xiao Tian who made these beads, seeing this as a way to quickly end the conflict and escape. He behaves like a wet rag. Having given a couple of beads to the waiter, the patrol chief says that they should be enough to pay the bill and the fine for calling the patrol. After this go, along with the entire squad having stolen one bead, decide to run away from the restaurant, constantly turning around and checking if a strange guy is chasing them. Gao decides to show a powerful magical weapon in the form of a bead to the gentleman from the mayor's office, which may help pave the way to a bright future for the city. The perplexed Xiao Tian and the waiter look at each other, while the bead still lies in the hand of the uncomprehending waiter. The waiter also decides to fall to his knees and says that he made a terrible mistake, so he will give away all the food they ordered for free. The old man understands that one such bead has great explosive power, and it can level one street to the ground only if Xiao Tian wishes. Fengzi looks at Xiao Tian and thinks that even with his inflated view of him, he still surpassed his current assessment. Sad Zhao Tian walks into the room and looks at the floor on the way. He looks like he was scolded by his parents for bad grades at school. Fengzi, Xie'er, and Buhui enter the guy's room and say that in the evening there will be some kind of lantern festival, at which there will be a lot of people, including them. The old man invites Zhao Tian to go to the festival with them, saying that he might miss out on a lot, although he actually thinks that the guy might fight at the event. As usual, the excited guy thinks that he will meet strong swordsmen at the festival who can kill him if he quarrels with them. That evening, all four of them got together and went to the Lantern Festival, leaving the poor donkey girl alone who even burst into tears. Danji did not grieve for long because her sister and Owl flew to her to jointly keep an eye on their common master Xiao Tian. The show participants did various things with weapons, like this guy swallowing a sword just like girl's favorite throat ability. The guys stand on plates that are held on thin sticks while they depict a peacock pose, bending one leg and kneeling the opposite leg. Xiao Tian examines all the participants in the show, noting that the local juggling is similar to the juggling in his world, although the cultivated energy of the immortals can be felt. The sisters notice the disappearance of the old man who was supposed to walk behind them, and they begin to have an attack of shame, because they know where the old man went. They hear sounds of outrage from the gambling house, and the voice that makes these screams clearly belongs to a person they know well. Fengzi is in a gambling house playing with some man whom he yells at because he thinks he is cheating, so he wins ten times in a row. The old man asks Xiao Tian to help him get to the bottom of the truth, because everyone in this house is a swindler and deceives people for a lot of money. He points his finger at the fat guy and says that with the help of his partners, he will definitely bring this gambling house to light. The owner of this house told our old man that if he did not provide evidence that they were cheating, then they would simply kick him out of the gambling house and never let him in again. Our main character tries to calm down the old man who is very angry and suggests that he himself play with these guys. But the mustachioed man just laughed at him. 
To play in his gambling house, you need to have money, and they don't look like those who have money. Suddenly, our hero takes out a golden pearl from the pocket and says that this should be enough to play in this house. Seeing the gold in front of them, all three guys were simply shocked and blinded by the shine of this pearl. The head of the house thought that it had enough value to play. Still, he accepts the challenge of our hero. If suddenly he can win, then all the old man's money will come back. But if the owner of the house wins, then he will take the gold for himself. But our hero was not at all afraid, and only made the face of a real Sigma and told them to start the game right now. Some demonic creatures stood on the balcony and parasitized today's fire show was simply incredible. One of his servants bowed to him and said that it was all thanks to their master. If it weren't for this guy who resembles a demon, nothing would have happened. He just pets his demonic beast and talks about the message that said about nine Taibo. He wondered if he could control so many Taibo. He asked his master to carefully look at the thing that one of the Taibo left. Apparently he does not know about the power of this thing, but it is incredibly powerful and valuable. The demonic dude takes the golden pearl in his hands and says that there really is some kind of secret hidden in it. But he doesn't remember anything about how he created this magical object. The donkey girl was sitting on the roof and apparently was going to steal something, but an owl was sitting next to her. The voice of her conscience said, but she was not going to tell anything about the plans of the lady in red. Meanwhile, in the house, the game was in full swing. Our hero took turns pulling out various combinations on the dice. Off screen, our owl makes an interesting note that thanks to our hero's abilities, he simply cannot lose. And so it happened. Everyone was happy about the 15th victory of our hero, especially the old man who could get his money back. But the guy was clearly tired of winning for the 15th time. The guy decided to ask the old man the reason why he did not win this game on his own because no magic spell was cast on the game. He begins to tell him about the need to improve the gaming equipment, and the only way to do this is to resort to the use of spells. Our hero remembers the old days when cultivators were not so famous, but now you just have to say that you have magical powers and all things become much more complicated. But he also says that the game has been spoiled for a long time and requires from the player only the ability to competently handle the cubes in order to get the necessary numbers, just like prayers in Genshin Impact. And now our hero will give us a video lesson on how to spin the dice correctly in order to get a one. Of course, there will be no detailed training, but you get the idea. You just need to guess in advance what number will come up when you roll. The owner of the house is clearly worried that this young man has already won half of his gambling house, but he simply cannot let him get away with all this. He must come up with a cunning plan. His eyes turned red with anger like the Sharingans from Naruto. He decided to accuse our main character of cheating and all his winnings were lies. The girls clearly didn't like the way the owner of the house behaved, and they began to stand up for the guy because he won everything absolutely honestly. But the guy simply said that this was his gambling house, and they would only play by his rules. The easiest way out for our hero now would be to return all those pearls that he won and calmly leave his house. At this moment, our main character would be simply shocked by such a move by the owner of the house. He did not understand why he did this. But if you do not do as he says, he will simply die. Suddenly, some dude appeared and loudly declared that no one would do anything in his presence, thereby attracting the attention of all the people and even the owner of the house. He was very interested in meeting with our main character because he dared to cause chaos not far from his land. But suddenly, an incredible trembling and fear passed through this guy's body because Xiao Jiang looked at him. The owner of the gambling house said that he came just in time because these guys had just done terrible things and he could help him get his money back. Our hero makes a very crazy face and says that he just met his old friend named Bai Tian. Now he can be considered a double criminal, but he swears that it won't happen again if he is released. They all jumped back in fear of our hero because they couldn't harm him. They asked the owner of the gambling house if he had any evidence that Xiao Jin was cheating. Due to all this noise, a huge crowd of people gathered in front of the house who wanted to find out what the problem was. Was someone really creating problems for the gambling house? Our main character also goes out into the street and thereby scares the police officer of this city and puts him on edge. The donkey thinks that now Xiao Jin will get a lot of problems on her head, but the little girl thought she smelled something fried and needed to come closer to see everything clearly. Meanwhile, our main character makes a speech to the police and citizens of the city that he was falsely accused. But if they think that he should be punished, then so be it. One of the policemen looked at our guy menacingly and said that his speech did not sound very convincing. Xiao Xin was afraid that the police did not believe him, and now he would have to bear responsibility for his actions. But suddenly the younger student screamed in fear, and with tears in her eyes said that the owner of the gambling house did many terrible things when no one was looking. The mustachio dude was simply shocked by such a sudden accusation, because the police would rather believe a little girl than him. In horror, he asks the young lord of this city what brought him here at such a time. 
but he just laughed and said that he simply could not miss the time when such a beautiful and young sister was in the city. He came to her. The girl was clearly angry because this small but rich freak was constantly pursuing her. Why did this idiot even need her? The old man tries to assess the situation because his two guards also have incredible strength. It will be quite difficult to deal with them. Our main character points his finger at the young lord and tells him that this gambling house is a real trap and if it belongs to him, then he must answer for it. The guy clearly did not expect to see the young lord here, but this will even play into his hands because with such power as he has, he will definitely be able to finish off our hero, which he enjoys. Suddenly, the owner of the house bursts into the conversation and says that our hero should not speak to the young lord in such a tone or a terrible punishment will befall them. But this is exactly what Xiao Jian wants. He apologizes to the young lord if he suddenly caused him problems. If this is the will of the master, then he will sentence him to death with his own hands. Our main character is in such shock and cannot believe the picture before his eyes, but if he continues to irritate the young lord, he will definitely finish him off. Our boy cleared his throat a little and began to push his speech in front of the young master. Perhaps he really chose the wrong words in front of this man. But suddenly his face becomes like that of a madman, and he says that apparently the young gentleman is mentally retarded. Our hero pulls his cheeks like a small child. Everyone was shocked that our hero had such disrespect in front of the young lord. How is his head still on his shoulders? The old man was already sweating from tension because Xiao Jin showed great disrespect for one of the most important people in the city. Is our hero really so tired of living? The master simply sighed and told our hero that no matter which side wins now, the balance in the world will still be preserved. The words of a real old kung fu master. But Xiao Jian ordered the old man to leave here. He was shocked by these words. Did our main character really decide to save their lives and at the same time take all the problems upon himself? For some unknown reason, the young lord claps his hands and shouts loudly throughout the street. He points his finger at our main character and says that the young lord is indeed mentally retarded. Now Xiao Jian will become the third person who knows his terrible secret. The police, together with the owner of the gambling house, no longer knew what to do. The young lord has enormous power, but Xiao Jin talks to him like he's a fool. The young lord said that he saw talent in our main character, and from now on he will become his younger brother, to whom he will give everything that he has left. He approaches the master's two students and examines them carefully. As for these two girls, he wants to invite one of them to a romantic dinner to have some drinks and have some fun. The girls screamed in fear and called the young lord a terrible, smelly freak who did not deserve the girl's attention. Suddenly, the master's senior student can't stand it and hits him with such force that he is slammed into the ground, so the loser also has a bump on his head. At this moment, our hero was completely desperate because now he had lost his last chance to die in this world. Perhaps he would commit harakiri, but death should be from other reasons. Suddenly, a terrible scream was heard that someone had dared to harm the young lord. This scream deafened all our heroes. This demonic dude was riding astride his beast, screaming that someone dared to touch his son. He clearly would not forgive anyone for this and would simply roast him like a chicken on Thanksgiving. He immediately set his sights on our hero and vowed that he would first remove his skin and then slowly fry it in the blazing sun. Xiaoman remembers what he was told about this hellish dude and thinks that if he angers this guy even more, he will definitely find death. It sounds tempting. Our hero winks at the old man and says that only he can cope with him. While he distracts him, the old man and his students must quickly run away and not look back. The tension made the old man sweat even more than before. Couldn't Xiao Jin let him in on his plan instead of winking? But the best thing our main character could come up with was to simply grab the body of the young lord and run away from the crime scene like Sonic the Hedgehog. In order for his team to escape, he must take this mentally retarded man away, after which he began to whistle to call on his faithful steed for help. Hearing the whistle, the girl thought that the gentleman urgently needed the donkey, and with the help of a magic kick, she sent it to him. Seeing the donkey, our hero was inspired. He knew that his faithful steed would not leave him in trouble because he could smell the grass he was eating. Using his abilities, he climbed onto the donkey along with the mentally retarded lord. Turning back, he says that if this demonic guy wants to take his son, then first he needs to catch him in a race. The demonic dude was clearly angry and swore that if Xiao Jin did not let his son go, he would destroy his entire family. The girls took out their katanas and said that they were not going to just stand and watch their partner being killed, they simply had to help him. But the master stopped them from this idea because now their safety should come first while Xiao Jin risks his life for them. Suddenly the police looked at them angrily and said that they would not let them stop the hellish dude from administering justice. Like a true kung fu master, he jumps on these dudes and throws kicks left and right. The grandfather is clearly furious with this situation and is going to protect all his students at all costs. He asks that our main character not hold a grudge against him. 
He thought about what Xiao Jian was going to do, and thought that if he interfered with his plan, it would be a terrible insult to our hero. But instead of these thoughts, the whole team begins to fight with the police, in the hope that everything will be fine with Xiao Jian. Meanwhile, our hero staged a real race like in Formula One, racing with a hellish dude as if from the police. He can't understand why Xiao Qin rides his donkey faster than he rides his demonic beast, which is almost tired, it just can't be like this. Who is helping our hero? Turning around, our hero is surprised that the hellish guy's ride looks formidable, but his speed and endurance leave much to be desired. He asks the donkey girl not to run so fast because they still have to buy time for the master and his students. This idiot noticed that our hero began to drive much slower and ordered his hellish horse to catch up with this loser. An entire army of policemen came into the city to help catch Xiao Jian. How could they even miss the kidnapper when he was right in front of them? The city turned into a real racing track. Even people hid in their houses so as not to interfere with such an event. Our hero mocks these guys because even though he kidnapped his son, even so a small group of people came out to hunt him. Xiaopin handled his donkey very deftly, and due to the fact that he had already been to this city, he was easily able to find new roads in order to avoid persecution. Our hero realized that apparently this city is not as clean as it seems at first glance, so he will borrow some resources to help the population. A real Robin Hood. Taking some coal and lime, he could put on a real fireworks show, but he still needed to find another object with which he would set fire to this mixture. After looking in his inventory, he found several resources to create fire. It's good that he studied science for a long time over the years, and now he can do this without any problems. Having made the face of a mad scientist, he connects all the components together to give his team a little time to save him. At first, the owl didn't understand what the hell this crazy guy was doing, but realizing that he was going to start an arson in the city, she got very scared. But it was not only that, it turns out that our main character put his own power into this mixture, and now when he uses it, it will be very bad for everyone. Our hero throws a bomb into the crowd of policemen and the hellish dude, saying goodbye that he is sending him his special gift. Finding himself facing forward the cool Lord of Darkness, the bomb began to glow and realizing that it smelled like something was fried, he got scared. Like Klee from the game Genshin Impact, he looks into the heavens and says to let this city burn long and well. He was extremely pleased because even though the bomb formula was not yet perfect, it could still cause great damage, perhaps it would kill him too. And finally, our hero's plan finally came into action and a huge blast wave began to destroy the city. His face became like Gojo Satoru, after he learned all the secrets of the reverse curse technique. Such a bright light seemed like the guy had already entered heaven. We are shown the moment three seconds before the explosion of this bomb and the shocked face of a hellish dude who thinks he is already dead. There are two seconds left before the explosion and he tries to spur his hellish horse to run away from the explosion site. There is one second left before the explosion, and the guy in complete despair begs his horse to somehow help him escape. And now we are again shown the moment at which the bomb exploded. I don't think that any of those guys managed to survive. Our hero decides to give a little philosophy lesson, saying that just as a fang can become an excellent sword, a match can become an excellent bomb. The hellish dude remained standing on the ground, although he was covered in scratches, but his horse had it much worse and he began to glow with a bright light. The dark guy curses his own weakness and says that if he were faster, he would have caught our hero, in which case he wants to sacrifice the beast. Remembering the moment when our protagonist Pearl was brought to him, he could not have thought that he would be so afraid of its power. He takes it out and realizes that at the last moment it dissipated a huge amount of energy, but no one can have more power than he has. He still doesn't understand where this incredible Pearl came from, but it clearly has incredible power that needs to be obtained. Our main character admired his creation in the form of an explosion and thought that it was just wonderful, but he would check everything in a few minutes. In this world, cultivators have incredible strength and therefore are not so easy to kill, but he can fight without being hit. It seems the guy has a new plan to leave this mortal world. The hellish dude tells Xiao Jin not to rush to his conclusions and let him finish all his business as the owner of this city. He gets up and begins to accuse our hero of first kidnapping his son and then destroying several of his cities, this is definitely not forgivable. He feels incredible strength in his hands, but if this is so, then first he wants to scare the guy a little so that he will die in agony. While the hellish dude is accusing our hero of lucky things, he just smiles like a moron and throws a bomb in his hand, showing that he is not going to joke. This devil was angered by this behavior of the guy, and he said that ancient symbols with enormous power were written on this bead. Realizing that the hellish dude is not joking, our hero begins to behave like a clown in order to confuse him and asks him for a head start. At one point, he got tired of pretending to be a buffoon because his only goal is to die and leave this damned world. 
but suddenly the realization finally dawned on him that the bead in the dark gentleman's hand looked eerily familiar. Apparently, Shao Qin decided to make himself a real joker, and he simply laughs at the villain, which makes him shocked. Our hero decided that if the dark dude is so pleased with the power that he now has in his hand, then he can bring him even more such pearls. The face of the Lord of Darkness became pale with fear because he simply could not believe that this guy still had a lot of such lucky power, and who was he anyway? But our hero still continues to laugh at him and offers a deal that if he gives him the power in the pearls, he will kill him. Because this is not difficult to do after such a terrible chase through the city. Hearing all the nonsense that the guy was talking about, he simply fell to his knees in despair because it was impossible to believe such a strange deal from a strange guy. The hellish lord asks our hero a question from which he falls into a stupor and cannot give an answer right away. But Xiao Qian declares that he is not going to deceive the hellish lord, he will just need to finish him off and then all the power will be his. But instead, the cool hellish dude decided to cry like a little girl and repent of his sins because he thought that his death would come soon. At one point, he simply fell to his knees and lost his head in front of our hero, saying that it would be better for him to be a dog that lies at the guy's feet than for him to die right now. Such strange behavior was incomprehensible to our hero, and he asked the Lord of Darkness to get up from his knees and then they could agree. Apparently, our hero would never be able to find his death. The old master finally arrived on the battlefield and, worried about Xiao Jin, asked him if his support was needed against the bad guy. Our hero was extremely surprised that the old man arrived here so quickly, but he was rather worried about the fate of his two students. Is everything okay with them? The old man says that they are completely safe, apparently showing his feelings is unpleasant for him, but he still says that he was worried about Xiao Jian and therefore came here very quickly. Seeing the ruler lying on the floor, he said that they could no longer stay in this city unless, of course, they wanted to make even more problems for themselves. He says that even if the Lord of Darkness repented of his sins, this does not mean that he will not do the same after a while, the only right decision is to finish him off right now. But our main character is simply shocked by the words of the old master. How should he finish him off? Maybe it would be better for the old man to show how it's done correctly. And in his thoughts, our dude was only thinking that he would have to kill him. But who then could give death to our main character? Suddenly, some strange voices were heard that said that if they were not going to finish off the Dark Lord, then they would do it themselves. Everyone's attention switched to them. A huge number of dark warriors and hats appeared on the roof, clearly in the mood for battle. The old man didn't understand what the hell these guys were doing here, because now there should be a peace agreement in effect. Seeing a strange seal, one of the dudes in hats said that this guy was the ruler of a large number of cities for several hundred years. He deceived the weak to please the rich. But at the moment when they asked them for help, they refused them. And it is surprising that to this day a great dynasty stands on earth. But the Dark Lord says that he does not respect either heaven or earth. Before there were only merchants, but then they mocked people. But it seems that he has already been cut in half. On behalf of that very empire, these guys sentenced him to death, which is better off remaining behind the scenes because the Dark Emperor was turned into a cutlet. Our main character stood in complete shock, because just before his eyes, his last hope was turned into puree. And where should he now look for new ways to end his life? Suddenly, one of the guys in the hat says thanks to Xiao Jin for helping them get on the trail of the Dark Emperor, but they will still need help in some matters. By striking his fists, he shows his determination, unfortunately, because he is going to take revenge for everything that this vile man has done. But now our main character clearly does not look like the kind of person who would help these morons, because they just destroyed his last hope to leave this damned world. He thinks that if these guys manage to kill the city lord, then they will kill the main character without any problems. All you need to do is piss them off well. One of the guys in the hats is about to attack Xiao Jin for insulting them, but his friend talks him out of such an idea because this guy is incredibly strong. But our main character is not going to stop. He has already suffered enough in this world and wants to go home, so he continues to insult these guys as much as possible. But instead of starting a battle, they say that an important meeting awaits them and how Shinobi. They disappear from sight of Konoha and do not allow our guy to finish speaking. Our hero was left standing in complete shock because these guys did not follow the template plot and did not fall for insults, but simply left, are they really so proud that they are great cultivators? The guy decides to turn to the old man to find out about these strange guys in black hats. Has he ever seen them? But the old master tells him that they rarely met on the battlefield. But when it comes to these guys, they all began to tremble in fear of their strength and power. Pointing to the floor, he says that he was once told that this land is called the Sacred Empire. Hundreds of years ago, nine states sought to seize these lands, and this is how the current imperial dynasty was founded. He tells the story of an unprecedented force that was able to keep these nine states at bay, 
But even with time, it did not note its former greatness. The people they just met call themselves the First Heaven Blood Alliance, who claim to be led by the Emperor of the First Heavenly Dynasty. Their main goal is to overthrow the current empire and ensure that the control of the blood of the First Heaven reigns over these lands again. Our hero at first thinks that these guys are not so bad and asks the master, but the old man says that their actions are bad and very dangerous. These people create chaos throughout all states, rob and do not take anyone into account because they believe that their own strength is capable of anything. Our hero thinks about the words of the master and wants to benefit from this situation, but he is just an ordinary person and there is no reason for him to fight with these guys. Looking back at the body of the fallen emperor, he thought that he really was a terrible person. He was the first to die and our hero wanted to follow him. But suddenly he realizes that since they were able to kill the city lord, their strength is much greater than his. He just needs to find a reason for them to want to finish him off. In his thoughts, he was already imagining how he would receive his death at the hands of one of those guys, the sweet dreams of our main character. He thought that if he continued to harass and insult them, their pride would simply leave them no other choice and they would finish him off. Encouraged, he asked his master, because if he knows so much about these people in black, then he should also know the place where they are. Of course, the old man is aware of the location, but he is worried that the young hero so vehemently wants to see these dangerous guys. But our main character simply puts his hands on the old man's shoulders and with a crazy smile says that these guys broke his valuable things and he would like to personally ask them for the debts. The old man pretended to believe the guy, but in reality, he just didn't want to continue looking at that scary face. He told our hero about one of the places where they could be it was one of the ancient cities located a hundred miles to the east. But the old man warns him that even though these guys are in a dynasty, they usually consider themselves more important than others, and it would be better to be careful. These guys do not stand on ceremony with their rivals and solve all problems by force. In a battle with them, it is not clear who will emerge victorious and who will be the loser. But our main character no longer listened to all the old man's stories, but simply wanted to go to this city as soon as possible, but the master was surprised when he found out that he wanted to go there alone. The guy says that of course he will go alone because a lot of troubles await them ahead, and the girls and the master will only get in the way. But we all know that our hero's intentions were completely different. He wanted to end this meaningless life as quickly as possible, and did not want his friends to be near him at that moment. But the old man still began to ask questions. Why the hell did the guy decide to become an enemy for these guys? Because he knows very well that this will not end well. Our main character says that these guys can be extremely dangerous, and he just wants to make a small visit to find out the situation. If they attack, he will start fighting for his life. And in his thoughts, the guy was only thinking about the fact that he was able to lie so successfully. Of course he was going there to finally die. But did you think it would be different? From these words, the old man was even more shocked, because the boy was going to fight them solely on his own. Was he really tired of living? Our hero is trying to make sure that the old man does not worry about him, but in reality he is just going as an excuse to go to this city alone and die in peace. But the old man says that these guys are not used to ordinary people and how they live their lives so the main character won't even be able to talk to them normally. The old man already realized that our hero was hiding something, but he thought that he was going to strengthen the alliance between them and wanted to help him in this matter. The boy doesn't understand why the old man is behaving so strangely, but his eyes have already begun to shine and look at our hero as if at an angel. He says that he noticed all the determination of the guy, unfortunately, and remembered the old days. From these words, the old man was inspired and decided that he wanted to go with our hero on this journey. This is clearly not the answer that our hero was counting on, but unfortunately, he will have to refuse the old man such a request. He is traveling alone. But suddenly two of the old master's disciples called out to them and landed nearby like real ninjas. The senior student said that immediately after the terrible explosion occurred, they immediately rushed to help their teacher. Having praised his students, he says that he is going to leave this city and go on a trip. All the details will be later, but now he needs to pick up his suitcases. One of the girls was glad that they would finally go on a new journey, and the second took the master's order more seriously. But suddenly a strange voice was heard, saying that she had slept well. It turns out that this is the son of the Dark Emperor who was sleeping on a donkey all this time. He did not understand where he was and what was happening in this damn city. At this moment, our hero was much in shock because he had completely forgotten about the existence of this city lord. The donkey throws this idiot off of him so that he flies high into the sky right towards the stars. Upon landing, he saw the body of his dead brother, from which he fell into incredible shock because he could not believe that someone could defeat him. Everyone else just stood and watched as the young lord cried over his brother's body and begged him to wake up so he could play with him once again. 
The old man thinks that they have already managed to eradicate the evil in this city, and perhaps it would be right to give the body of this guy to his younger brother, so he can give him a decent burial. Our hero has long been tired of enduring all these situations, but he just wants to go to the next world, but so be it. Let him take the body of his terrible brother. Suddenly, the girls started shouting that they also wanted to become benevolent, and that our main character must force the young lord to repay the debt. The older student tries to calm the younger one down a little because he just touched her, but she was incredibly angry, and was not going to just forgive him. Our hero says that the act of the mentally retarded was truly terrible, but even despite this, he was able to protect them, and did not take out a sword to finish them off. A crowd of city residents also ran to the explosion, and looking at the body of the Dark Lord, they tried to understand who committed this terrible crime. Seeing his brother crying next to the Lord's body, they began to point their fingers at him and attract attention. For a long time, the citizens of this city brought gifts for this overlord in fear that he would simply destroy the city and them. And with the help of a gambling house, his mentally retarded brother deceived people and forced them to pay by robbing them of money and jewelry. Thus, over the long period of their business, they made enormous capital and became very rich. Rumors quickly spread throughout the city that the emperor was dead, and half of the police had also fallen in battle. Now their treasures had been stolen, and the residents thought they could start a riot. Everyone picked up sticks and was going to take revenge on the young lord for the terrible suffering they caused them. Meanwhile, our young lord was already in tears and begged for his little brother to open his eyes and protect him from terribly evil people. Since such a fortunate situation arose, the master orders our guy to quickly leave the city while there is such a chance. Although our main character did not know all the bad things they did, judging by the angry faces of the townspeople, it was clear that he had done a lot of bad things. It can be assumed that now he will get what he deserves. In the next frame, we are already shown how the guys fly on their magic swords, and our main character, as always, rides on his faithful steed. While they are driving, our hero wants to find out a little more about the Alliance, but in his thoughts, he was thinking about how strong they would be, and would they even be able to defeat him in battle. The old man doesn't know much, so the best solution would be to find out more information before the battle, but it is known that this city also has its own lord. The old man was too serious and was already thinking about how they would fight those guys, and what tactics would be better to choose. Seeing that our main character is going to act extremely unreasonably, he scolds him and asks him to be extremely careful when they go beyond the city limits. Sighing, he understands that now he has a nanny who will always look after him. Maybe dying won't be so easy this time. But in the old man's head, a memory suddenly appeared of how our hero solved the problem by exploding a huge bomb in the middle of the city. His eyes even widened from such a picture. He's surprised that the weapon that this guy created caused such terrible damage, otherwise those guys in black hats wouldn't be so interested. He thinks that even the old man still doesn't know how much the city has changed and what will generally await them ahead. He remembers one guy who was a good ally to him in this city, and he could count on his help. Several hundred years have passed, and our old man does not know whether his old friend is alive, but he would gladly like to see either him or his descendants. The main character noticed that the old man had become too thoughtful, and decided to ask about his well-being. In response, he said that everything was fine, he just decided to plunge into his memories for a while, and find a couple of necessary moments there. But the old man still didn't stop thinking, because they had to overcome another 100 miles of travel, and they didn't know what dangers they would see. But suddenly they heard a strange voice that asked them about the city they were heading to. Our heroes had to make a short stop. It turned out to be some guy who was apparently already tired from the journey, and decided to lie down to rest on the grass. It's amazing that only recently the master said that they might meet robbers on their way, and now they meet a robbed man. What an amazing coincidence. But suddenly strange interference began to appear, and the face of this almost dead guy became cunning and insidious, as if he were a villain who was pretending to be weak. 